Deep in the hot, steamy backwoods of Lost Creek, Louisiana, there once lived two young boys named Tom and Clay. They were the best of friends. Hey, Clay, do you think Luthy Smith is pretty? Ooh, girls are gross. Well, you know you're going to have to marry a girl someday. I ain't got to get married. Would you if I was standing beside you? I reckon that wouldn't be so bad. I'll be your best man if you be mine. Okay, I'll be your best man. Let's shake on it. Race you to the creek. As they got older, the two friends became very different men. Tom was a soft-spoken, humble fella who was quite content working his family's small livestock ranch. But Clay was a hothead. Better stay out of my place and don't come back. Come on, Clay, let it go. Yeah, but Tom, I don't owe that fella any money. I'm just gonna have to learn to settle down. Yeah, yeah, I know. The temper years is gonna get you in trouble one of these days. Set me up. Hey, Clay, you're gonna pay me what you owe me, and you're gonna pay me now. Forget it, I don't owe you that money. That's it. Tom spent many months grieving for Clay and visited his grave each week at a tiny local cemetery a few miles on the outside of town. But Tom knew he eventually had to get on with his life, so he did. A year later, he met a young woman named Isabel whose family had just moved into the area. After a six-month courtship, the two decided to get married. Mama told me some good news this morning. My cousin Elizabeth's gonna be able to make it down for the wedding so she can be my maid of honor. Who do you want to be your best man? Well, I know this is gonna sound kind of strange, but do you remember me telling you about my best friend? You mean the one that was shot dead? Yes, Clay. I don't mean for him to be my best man. It's just, we made this promise when we were kids and he's my best friend and I, I just want to ask him out of respect. Well, all right. I know what he meant to you. But then, think about asking my brother. Thank you, Isabel. Besides, knowing Clay, if I didn't ask him, he'd probably haunt me the rest of my days. Hello, Clay. Remember that promise we made when we was kids? Well, get married, Clay. And really appreciate it if you'd be the best man at my wedding. But, uh, since you're dead and all. About time you came around here and asked me thought you'd never make it. But you've been dead all this time. How come you don't look any different? Don't let folks into heaven who made a promise and don't keep it. So I've been laying here this whole time. And I'd be much obliged if you let me keep my promise and be the best man at your wedding. Well, promise is a promise. Come on. Well, Tom figured he had no choice but to help his friend out. So he brought him back to town. Needless to say, the townspeople were quite scared when Clay, who they just put in the ground not more than a year ago, came back looking no worse for wear. But once they saw he was the same old Clay, they gradually started to accept him again, even if he was dead. Tom's wedding day finally came and there was quite a party at the local dance hall afterwards. Local fiddlers kept the guests dancing until the wee hours of the morning. And as the party wound down and Tom enjoyed another slow waltz with his new bride, he felt Clay tap him on the shoulder. It's time for me to go. Could you walk me back to the graveyard so we can say goodbye for the last time? I'll be back, I promise. Tom walked with Clay down the cemetery road. They walked in silence most of the time 
Clay looking up at the bright stars with a grin on his face. Is this heaven? Must be. But you can't go there. Besides, you got a new bride waiting on you back in town. Just let me walk with you a bit. I'll turn back in a few minutes, I swear. All right. And as they stroll through the beautiful forest, meadows, and beaches of heaven, Tom thought it was a thousand times more beautiful than the local preacher had said it would be. Tears streamed from his eyes at the beauty of the place. It was then that Tom looked at his watch. He was shocked to see that hours had passed since he left Isabel back at the dance hall. Isabel. Hey, I gotta go. All right, maybe we'll see each other again one day. And with those words, the glorious world around them vanished, and Tom found himself back in the dark cemetery. He couldn't wait to get back to town and tell Isabel what awaited them on the other side. But as he walked through the graveyard, he noticed that something was strange. The tiny old cemetery was now filled with new graves, huge monuments, and mausoleums. Tom ran down the long cemetery road back towards town, but stumbled across a strange city he'd never seen before. The townspeople were dressed in odd garments, staring at Tom like he was some sort of strange creature. Uh, where am I? What, what town is this? Lost Creek. What are you, drunk? Tom started to get scared. He asked around for Isabel, but no one had heard of her. He tried to find the dance hall, and no one had heard of it. He went to every church he could find, banging on the door to find his pastor. But he was nowhere to be found. Finally, a sympathetic elderly pastor let Tom into his office. Tom frantically told him the story of his wedding and how he walked his friend Clay back to the graveyard. Now he couldn't find Isabel or the pastor who had married them, Oh, come on, son. It isn't Halloween. Y you know, besides, I've heard that old ghost story a million times. W what are you talking about? The pastor lit his pipe, then told Tom the old tale of the bridegroom who disappeared on his wedding night. It was said that the bridegroom walked back to the cemetery with his dead friend and was never seen again. The bride was so grief-stricken that she fell ill and died. That ain't possible. I'm not saying it ain't true, but I do happen to have the church records from back then. The pastor sighed and grabbed a large, dusty book. He flipped back the yellowing pages and said, Here they are. Married 150 years ago this night. So like Clay before him, poor old Tom had made a promise he didn't keep. For Tom promised he'd be back for his bride and never returned. But Tom never believed he'd really been away for 150 years. In fact, they say that Tom's ghost still haunts the old section of the cemetery in Lost Creek, Louisiana, stranded outside the gates of heaven. And if you should go there, and hear him ask you to help find his bride, turn around and walk away, because you might not ever come back. Help me, please.